good afternoon. I've chosen to use the reading which is set for today from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, um, starting at chapter 28, verse 10. Let me read this for you. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haram. There he reached a certain place. He stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set up a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. For all that I give, I will give it. For all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Who would you choose as a leader? It's a difficult question, isn't it? particularly when there's just two to choose from. The suntanned, tough, outdoorsy, impetuous type of person with lots of experience of the world, or the geek who stays at home and enjoys his home comforts and his mother's cooking. When the choice comes down to just two, to two different people, it's soft and difficult, and opinions will differ as to who should be the leader. Isaac and his wife, Rebecca, had their opinions as to which of their two sons should be blessed. Which one should Isaac bless? Because the one that he blessed would be the one that would inherit his wealth and the position not just simply as leader, but also leader of the whole community, not just the family. Their sons Esau and Jacob were twins. Esau was first born, so custom would have it that he should receive the next, uh, the, the blessing and become the next head of the family when his father died. But let's hear what led up to and during Rebecca's pregnancy. If we read from the Bible, just going back a couple of chapters to verse 25, when, Eth when Rebecca was pregnant, she had a word from the Lord and the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples are within you who will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the elder will serve the younger. The firstborn son, Esau the hunter, the man of the open country, became his father's favourite, while Jacob, who was content to stay at home, was his mother's favourite. From very early on, we can see that this story is going to be really messy, and in fact painful. This is only confirmed further when Esau comes in one day from hunting, when he was probably in his late teens. He was tired, he was dirty, and just hungry, and he found Jacob cooking a vegetable stew. Esau was impetuous as well. They just wanted some food very quickly. Jacob was clever, and his soul and his brother sold him his birthright for a bowl of that soup. Later, when their father was old and fearing that the end of his life was approaching, he called his firstborn, the favourite son Esau, 
and told him that he was going to give him the blessing. But before doing so, he wanted him to go out and hunt for some game, and then to cook it and to prepare it so that he might eat it. So off he went. But Rebecca's, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, had overheard this conversation, and she wanted Jacob to have the blessing. So she prepared food in the way that Esau would have done, and put Esau's clothes on Jacob and covered his skin with wild goat skin so that it was rough when his father touched it. So Jacob went in before his brother returned from hunting and gave his father food and then stole his brother's blessing, so inheriting his father's wealth and leadership of the whole family. When this was found out, of course, Esau was mad and threatened to kill Jacob. And when Rebecca heard of the danger, she urged Jacob to leave and go and live with her brother until Esau's anger was over. Before leaving, Jacob saw his father again and was instructed to find himself a wife from his uncle's household. Now on his journey to his uncle's, Jacob one night, tired from that journey, went to sleep and used a stone as a, to rest his head. And he had a dream, a dream of the stairway to heaven with angels going up and down it. And above it was the Lord who promised to Jacob that he and his descendants would inherit the land where he slept and that his descendants would be like the dust of the earth and would be blessed. I wonder if you've ever taken a good look at the outside of Bath Abbey. Whenever I go there, I, I look up and I see something that reminds me of this story. If you look carefully at the front of the abbey, you can see um, a 15th century representation of two ladders, one on each side, leading up to heaven. And they're carved into the main frontage of the front of the abbey. And there are these angels going up and down, all looking very scared. Some of them even seem to have tripped and turned upside down, maybe falling down. So whenever I see that, I get reminded of this story. Well, Jacob's story continues for several chapters in the book of Genesis. But to cut a long story short, Jacob went on to marry two of his uncle's daughters and eventually returned home, making peace with his brother Esau. But on his way home, he had another encounter with God, during which he and his descendants are blessed and his name is changed to Israel. It's a strange and a very remarkable story. Read it for yourselves. It starts in Genesis chapter 25. And it's an encouraging story which reminds us that God does not always choose the most obvious person to carry out his purposes. Even Abraham's grandson Isaac got the choice wrong. His favourite and adventurous eldest son was not the one that God had already chosen. It was to be Jacob the son who liked to stay at home and enjoy his mother's cooking. For some reason, Isaac seemed to ignore the prophecy that God gave his wife, Rebecca, when she was pregnant with the twins. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two peoples are within you and they will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the elder will serve the younger. Jacob, during his youthful years, was cunning and deceitful and I suspect completely oblivious to the fact that God had his hand on him. Then in the middle of the wilderness, he slept and had this dream. His response was, surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't aware of it. Even then, after that, he went on to live a very strange life, marrying two sisters and building up his own wealth. But then he met again with God one night, a night which the Bible tells us was spent wrestling with God, Wrestling with God for his blessing. And Jacob comes out of that experience a changed man. And he came out with a new God-given name, Israel. Even the most unpromising person can be changed through an encounter with God. And of course today, through the sacrifice of his son Jesus, our past and all of those mistakes that we have made, the consequences of those mistakes can be left behind. As we become followers of Jesus, we're released into freedom. Freedom that is God-given. I hope you've experienced that. If you haven't yet, you can turn to Jesus.
the experience is very real and is freely given.